dear friends. Can anything good come from the forest? We're too used to the knowledge that Jesus comes from Nazareth. And Nazareth, as a name, consequently has a glow attached to it. It's important because Jesus came from there. But in Jesus' time, it was a backward area. Rome was the eternal city, centre of the empire. More locally, Jerusalem held the temple, centre of Jewish life for a thousand years. These were the important places, places where important people met to discuss important things. The sense that nothing of consequence happened outside these areas, that nothing good can come from somewhere else, was common. It'd be a bit like someone in London saying that nothing interesting happens outside the M25. So when Nathaniel hears that the Messiah has been found and he comes from Nazareth, he's rather sceptical. Can anything good come from there? What we have here are expectations. Nathaniel does not expect to hear of the Messiah coming from Nazareth. In a similar way, the wonderful Old Testament story of the calling of Samuel is also about expectations. Now, I've always liked that story, God calling out, Samuel, Samuel, and slowly he learns how to respond, which is something I can relate to, not simply because of the name, but because I have always been very slow to respond to God's call. Now, what holds Samuel back is that he doesn't expect to hear God calling him, and so he thinks it's Eli. Similarly, Eli doesn't expect God to be calling Samuel. He's just a boy. What would God be doing calling him? And yet God persists until the realisation dawns on Eli and he instructs Samuel in the proper response. And what is that proper response? It is, of course, to listen. In so many of our prayers, as is right and proper, we are speaking to God. We speak to God of the people that we are concerned about, of the things we're hoping to achieve, of the peace in the world that we hope to see. We don't spend quite so much time listening. And yet, in any other relationship, we might expect a flow of information or conversation to be about equal. I would soon get fed up with a friend if all they ever did was talk about themselves and not allow me to say something. Possibly the most important thing we can do in prayer is listen. Because it is then that God makes himself known to us and we allow him to shape our lives, to mould us as he chooses, to, if you like, shatter our expectations. Now, the thing is, our culture prizes busyness. If you're busy, then you're clearly an important person. You're in demand. You're doing useful things. But perhaps the things that we think are important aren't quite as important as all that. And if we were to stop and listen once in a while, we might realise that there are some important things that just aren't being looked at. Maybe environmental care. Maybe poverty. The thing is, it's as if we're on the merry-go-round, afraid to get off, because if we did, we might miss something. There's even a acronym that's going around today called FOMO, FOMO, the fear of missing out. It seems to me that this is precisely what God needs us to do, to get off, to take that fear of missing out and spend time listening. This is, of course, part of the reason why we are commanded by God to keep the Sabbath day holy. If you're prohibited from working or travelling or carrying on with all the normal business of existence, then the chances are that you'll have a chance to listen, to make some space in your life and allow God to come into it. And it could be that God is calling you to do something different with your life. For God is calling each of us to have life, life in all its fullness. Most particularly, he is calling each of us to a holy life, a holy existence, a way of life which reflects his glory in our world. And he's calling each of us all the time, here, now. But how can we know what God is saying? I can't answer that for you. All I can say is that you know it when you experience it. All we can do is make sure that we aren't turning away the call. God doesn't normally spell things out in big neon lights, or at least not very often. His is the still, small voice of calm. Be still and know that I am God. I'm sure you're familiar with the experience of having a small voice at the back of your mind. Why don't you do this? Have you thought about that? Listen to that small voice. Give it time and space in which to speak. If we're too caught up in the busyness of our daily lives, then God's voice is drowned out. Stop for a while. Take a few minutes to sit and be still 
and know that the Lord is God and that God is good and the Spirit will move you. And the rewards that come from listening, from putting your expectations to one side, just for a moment, they can be tremendous. Maybe, just maybe, we might, like Nathaniel, discover the Messiah. Amen.